We are now going to uh, have a series of lectures on how pathogens evolve. The first lecture will uh, deal with pathogen-caused virulence. The second, with how the microbiota are managed and the distinction between symbionts and pathogens. The third, with how pathogens have evolved to evade and suppress the immune system. The fourth deals with an extremely important problem, the rapid evolution of antibiotic resistance. And the fifth concerns therapies that can mitigate the consequences of that kind of evolution. Pathogens have their own agendas. They respond flexibly and rapidly to anything that we do to them. And you can think of them as being primarily interested in their own reproductive success and not really being at all interested in what happens to you, either good or bad. So let's first discuss pathogen-caused virulence. And a key idea here is the trade-off between virulence and transmission. Another is the distinction between vertical and horizontal transmission. And the third is the distinction between single and multiple infections. Each one of these contrasts affects intrinsic pathogen virulence. Now, virulence is caused both by direct pathogen effects and by host responses. We've just seen in the last set of lectures how many diseases there are that are associated with the immune response. Virulence is always an interaction between pathogen and host. And in these lectures, we are analyzing the portion of damage done to the host that is caused by properties that are intrinsic to the pathogen rather than by the host response. The first idea here is that there is a trade-off between the virulence of the pathogen and the probability that it will be transmitted. And the example that brought that idea to the forefront is myxoma virus in rabbits. So the myxoma virus is a member of the pox virus family. It's transmitted by mosquitoes, fleas, ticks, lice, and mites, so it's an arbovirus. It causes tumors, but not immediate death in cottontail rabbits in the Americas, but in European rabbits, the genus Erectolagus, it causes myxomatosis, which is an acute disease that initially has a 100% mortality rate. Now, it is European rabbits who were brought into Australia. Myxomatosis was introduced to Australia to control their devastating outbreak. There were no natural predators of European rabbits, and they were essentially grazing the countryside right down to the dirt. Both the pathogen and the host then evolved. The pathogen evolved less virulence, and better resistance evolved in the host. Virulence did decline, so virulence did go down but myxoma remained quite virulent. The infected rabbits at the end still only survived for 20 days. So this is how virulence strain changed. They identified five grades of virulence by case fatality rate. So virulence grade one had more than 99% case fatality rate down through virulence grade five, which had less than 50%. The mean survival time was less than 13 days for virulence grade one and quite, long, quite a bit longer than 50 days for virulence grade five. These rows indicate time periods between 1950 and 1981. What you can see is that initially 100% of the strains of myxoma virus were grade one. They lost virulence, but they essentially evolved into virulence grade three here in the middle, which still has a case fatality rate of between about 50 and 70 percent. So the way this worked is that if the rabbit dies quickly, there's very little opportunity for fleas and other biting insects to transmit the disease. The less virulent forms can then out compete the more virulent forms because they have superior transmission. However, they do worse. While doing worse in a single host, they are doing better in the population as a whole. 
Now, the hosts also evolve genetic resistance, and they do have adaptive immunity. So the take-home point from the myxoma virus in Australia is that there's often a trade-off between virulence and transmission. From the pathogen's point of view, this trade-off is a major problem if the pathogen is only living in this host. If it also has other hosts, then that's not so much of a problem. If this problem is not solved, a host-specific pathogen will go locally extinct because it will essentially kill all of its hosts before it can transmit out of them, which is what happened in the initial Ebola epidemics. The second major issue with virulence is vertical versus hor horizontal versus vector transmission. Strictly vertical transmission, which is a transmission from parent to offspring, selects for low virulence and eventually for commensalism. This, in other words, this is pathogen transmission which is mimicking the transmission of genes from parents to offspring. Strictly horizontal transmission, that is no transmission from parent to offspring, but all transmission between individuals who are of the same age class and not necessarily related, it selects for high virulence. Selection for virulence with vector transmission depends on the impact of virulence on the eff efficacy of the vector. So in vector-borne diseases, the genome of the pathogen has to be able to deal with both the host and with the vector that gets it to the host. And they can often have different kinds of immune systems. Waterborne, horizontally transmitted diseases uh, have major impact. So here are a few of the major health problems on the planet. Typhoid fever, cholera, amoebic dysentery, rotavirus, and bacillary dysentery. The annual deaths that are being caused by these diseases continue at high levels. So we're seeing, in sum, more than a million, about a million and a half deaths annually from waterborne diseases. Now this is why the clean water that's provided by a modern sewage system has such a huge impact on human survival. Another major determinant of the intrinsic virulence of pathogens is thought to be whether infection is single or multiple. Is the host infected just by one strain of pathogen or by multiple strains? And first we have effects that are mediated by host mortality. So multiple infection will select for increased intrinsic virulence if the impact of the parasites on the host is through the mortality of the host. Then competition among strains for representation in, trans in transmission modifies the virulence transmission trade-off because to be transmitted, the pathogen has to dominate the competition, but in doing so, it damages the host. So virulence is going to increase because the competing pathogens are is a, pro is a byproduct of their competition damaging the host. They can't avoid doing so because if one of them doesn't do it, the other one will. However, if the effects are mediated by host growth or host condition rather than by the death of the host, if they have sublethal effects, and if those effects feed back to the parasites, to reduce their rate of development, so a slow, slowly growing host or a host in poor condition is one in which the parasites cannot develop as rapidly, then multiplicity of infection generally leads to lower virulence. So this is a complex one. To summarize, virulence intrinsic to pathogens increases when anything affects the virulence transmission trade-off Anything shifts transmission from vertical to horizontal. Anything increases the frequency of multiple infections that have more impact on mortality than on growth. So virulence is a characteristic of pathogens that can evolve in response to these sorts of conditions.